media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, recycling trade publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Chris Vermeulen from the TechnicalTraders.com. Welcome back to the show, Chris. Hey, thanks for having me, Jim. Chris, the stock markets last week were kind of trading sideways. Some sectors were even negative. What's the feeling this week? Yeah, last week was a pretty choppy week for the markets. We saw the SP 500 and the NASDAQ, uh, for that matter. They both kind of sold off and dipped into some oversold territories. We had obviously Biden and some tax news that created a, a sharp drop. And then we had a, another kind of follow through drop the, uh, a couple of days later, kind of putting the market in this very short term oversold condition. Just, just enough a big buyer step right back in and bought things back up. And and that's what we want to see. I mean, we're still in a raging bull market. The market, uh, the stock market's traded sideways for the last five or six trading sessions. And, and that's a good thing because we saw a really strong run late March uh, into um, early April. And of course, the market needs to work that off. And, and that's what we've seen over the last week is a sideways move. And we're starting to see life come back into these markets. For example, last week, the majority of sectors that I follow, kind of a top 35 sectors, most of them were, were uh, bearish in the short term. They had downtrends. They were showing signs of um, topping on a longer term basis as well. And all of a sudden, in two trading days, most of the sectors popped up and they've, they've turned into uptrends. They've got strong volume moving back in. And they're outperforming a lot of the defensive sectors. So this is a really good sign that the market took a breather and then suddenly out of nowhere we're seeing, you know, new money pile into all the sectors across the board. And so I think the stock market is, is primed and ready for another leg higher. So it's, it's pretty exciting to see this type of price action. Now it's the time of year where I have to ask, uh, will we see a sell in May and go away or has the stock market proven to be a very lively monster with so many moving parts that if you just try to walk away from it, you could be making a big mistake? Yeah, it's tough to say if the sell in May and go away. I mean, it didn't happen last year. Uh, the market just kept melting up and up and up, and it kind of feels like that could be the, a similar scenario. As long as the markets don't take off and, and go up really quickly like they did in um, – uh, August of last year, where they just take off and they start to have big gains day after day for two or three weeks straight, because uh, that's not sustainable. But if it keeps doing this, it rallies a few percent up, trades sideways for a week or so and continues. It did that through most of the, the first half of last year. It's very sustainable. We can see a big, big run in this market. So I don't think you want to step aside. We're in a, we're in a bull market. Money continues to flood the system. Uh, you got to ride this out in, until, you know, proven wrong, and, and then you can get out. So uh, definitely want to be involved here going forward. Any sectors dominating? Yeah, there there is. A, you know, you look at the retail sector. It's actually doing ex- exceptionally well. It's holding up. It's got a very strong chart pattern. And, um, you know, it's it's one of the strongest sectors. It, we've got very strong earnings coming out. Uh, I think it's about 86% of companies are beating estimates for earnings. And, of course, we're seeing that in the XRT, the retail sector ETF. And it continues to push up. And, I mean, that to me is the one that's got quite a bit of upside potential. It's it's pushing and testing a significant resistance area around this $95, $96 a share. And if it breaks that, I think we're going to see about a 10% move in this sector very quickly I mean, it doesn't matter where you go, what product you're trying to buy or what grocery or building material, everybody is sold out. Everyone's jacked up the prices. Um, you know, earnings, earnings are just, are, they're really good. And I think we're going to see a big pop and a takeoff in, um, in these share prices going into the summer. Now, uh, high tech, is that back? 
Yeah, looking at the the tech sector, we're definitely seeing um, some big uh, market leaders. You look at like Apple, Microsoft, uh, the semiconductor sector. They've they've performed really well over the past month. They've they've all been taking a breather with the stock market um, the last week and a half. But overall, those technology sectors, even um, um, solar and the EV market, a lot of these uh, sectors that were leaders last year in 2020. They're starting to come back to life, and and if the tech sector really, if we can get follow through here on this move, I think we're going to see a really big run, and that is going to pull the Nasdaq up dramatically. I think the Nasdaq is going to continue to be kind of the market leader uh, in terms of uh, which index is going to lead the way. The Russell 2000 did really well several months ago, but it's kind of fallen by the wayside, and now technology is on the cusp of starting another big run that I think. A, really make people shake their heads going like, why wasn't I in that move? So I like the NASDAQ. I like the tech sector. It uh, continues to um, perform very well, and I think it's about to have another sprint higher. Well, isn't that the stock market? Everybody always going, why wasn't I in that move? Chris, Chris, (laughs) what's the the secret to to picking something you think is going to pick up? Because obviously, if it's uh, going down, nobody wants to buy it. But everybody's heard buy low, sell high, and yet in real life it seems to go opposite to that. Yeah, typically typically people are in the market and they panic when it starts to sell off. They think they're doing they're in the wrong place, the wrong time, and um, they just don't understand how the markets work. And the market has an, uh, an incredible way to make people panic and sell positions and get out at the worst time. And it also has the best way of, of getting everyone worked up and creating this herd psychology and everyone starts to feel like they're missing out and, and, and then they all pile in right up near the highs and then you get a sharp pullback. It's just the way the markets move. It's very hard to buy low and sell high. It sounds so simple. Um, if you're a short-term trader or somebody who looks at the stock market all the time and you, you've got too large of a position on or something like that, you get swung out, you 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 buy high, you sell low all the time. But if you're a passive, more investor realizing, hey, this is a major bull market, I'm not getting out until it's a confirmed bear market, whenever you see these big pullbacks, if you've accumulated new money, you want to buy into this weakness. When when people are when you're starting to feel feel fearful, that's when you want to add some more in there because you're getting in at a discounted price and it should rebound because you're in an uptrend. So it's a it's a it's a tough market. Most people obviously get out at the wrong time and uh, see this market go up without them. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a tough game. We'll have more with Chris Vermeulen right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Chris Vermeulen. Chris, are people looking at defensive uh, actions right now, or are they bailing? Well, we've seen the defensive sectors or areas start to uh, show some signs of strength. The bond market looks like it's trying to put in a bottom over the last month and a half. It's it's really kind of started to to carve out um, uh, kind of a, an up an up rally here. Um, we're also seeing the precious metal sector do the same thing. It's had a little bit of life over the last month and a half. So have utilities. Those really defensive sectors are, are telling us there was a wave of fear in the market. Now, in the last couple of trading days, we've seen those kind of pull back uh, and money's kind of been flowing into the stock market. So the big question right here is, are we going to see a wave of, of fear pick up and we see um, bonds and, and utilities and precious metals take off? Or was that just kind of like a little wave of fear and now everyone's kind of re-energized and they want to get back in the stock market and they sell their defensive plays and move back into stocks. And that's kind of what we're just starting to see. We're seeing bonds down, metals down here, and we're seeing the stock indexes. While the indexes are relatively flat on the day, most of the sectors are actually trading slightly higher and positive. So money is just kind of 
broadly getting sprinkled across all sectors. People are just moving into stocks right now and a little bit out of the defensive. So I, I'm, I'm more positive here on the equity side of things versus the defensive side right now. We'll have more with Chris Vermeulen right after this. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlan, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com Weekly Recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com Weekly Recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Chris Vermeulen. Chris, uh, any action in gold, the precious metals? Mm -hmm. We've seen, you know, precious metals, they've had a, a nice move up over the last month and a half. So have the uh, gold, silver, and the miners, but uh, all of them are trading at a resistance area. They're they're struggling. We've seen this happen several times before. We saw it in October, November of last year. We saw it in um, January of this year, where gold in the precious metal sector looks like it's you know it's picking up speed to the upside, only to stall out and have big selling step in. Well, this is, we're in a very similar situation right now. The characteristics. The cycles, the, everything in play here is, is we're at that turning point. Are we going to see the precious metals here start to pop and rally and break out of these falling, these falling trends that they're in right now? Or are we going to see them roll over and have another bout of selling? And that's, that's kind of the tipping point. I feel as though they want to break out and move higher. But at this point, uh, we got to wait until that breakout happens. And if it does, I think there's a lot of opportunity in the gold and silver miner sector. So I'm keeping my eye on the, that sector because once it does break into an uptrend, gold and silver miners are going to probably become one of the best, the hottest sectors, the leaders going forward um, into the summer. Of course, uh, with the prices suppressed or not going anywhere right now, is now the time to invest in those areas and make sure you sprinkle it around. Don't just sink your teeth into one or two bites. Yeah, it, it definitely is. If, when you look back at the long-term chart, if you're an investor, not so much a short-term trader, uh, if you're investing, this is a, a prime time. Gold's pulled back. It's had a beautiful pullback with it, within the chart. It's still forming a very strong chart pattern. It's at 1775 today as we talk. It's the next upside target is 26, 2700. So you're looking at, you know, almost $900,000 per ounce gain, which is pretty substantial. Uh, silver's got a lot more upside potential. Gold miners are multiple times that uh, going forward. So there's a lot of, uh, definitely opportunity, but these patterns are very slow. This, Big run started in late 2018. We've had this massive run up that topped out in 2020, and we've been trading sideways, you know, for a year almost, uh, getting there 10 months or so. Uh, when this pattern does start, it's going to be a multi-year rally to the upside again. So as an investor, this is it. This is a pullback. This is at support for gold. Silver's kind of the same thing. It's been trading sideways. So I really like it as a, a long-term entry point to get into the precious metal sector. Cryptocurrencies, any action there? Yeah, well, Bitcoin is definitely struggling to uh, to get some some traction. It had some damage done to the charts. It's actually had uh, the most damage we've seen on the charts um, since uh, really, I think it was twenty early twenty twenty. There was a big drop that actually put some damage in, and, and then it took about six months for it to to repair that chart and break to the upside. And so we've seen that happen again recently. Uh, Bitcoin fell 27% in the last week and a half. It's had a re knee-jerk reaction bounce back up. It went from uh, roughly 46,000 all the way up to about 55,000. Um, but it broke a bunch of support levels. And now it's stuck under those levels, which are now acting as resistance. It's also stuck under the 50-day and the 20-day moving average, which from a technical standpoint, those are really critical trend levels that if you're above those moving averages, they should act as support. If you're below them, that's where uh, traders are looking to sell positions. So 
We're definitely seeing a struggle here for Bitcoin. It really needs to muscle itself higher and get back above 60,000 very quickly or, uh, or, or this might be the start of a new downtrend. And my downside target for Bitcoin is, is around 30,000. So there's a lot of downside potential if this uh, trend picks up speed here. Chris, what's going on in crude? Well, crude's been, um, we've been seeing a trade sideways for the last several months. It's consolidating. It really came up and hit a, a Fibonacci measured move around 65, 66 dollars a barrel which was the key resistance area going back uh, over a year. Uh, right now, it's trading in a big bull flag pattern. Whichever way it breaks out and resolves, I think we're going to have a very significant move. For example, if we see uh, crude oil close above 66.75, uh, I think we're going up into around uh, $78 a barrel very quickly. If we break below $57 a barrel, then I think we're unwinding all the way back down to somewhere around uh, $48 a barrel. So there's going to be some pretty big moves here. But right now, it's trading sideways in a range. It's right in the middle of the range. So it's a, it's a coin toss, a 50-50 bet of which way it's going to move. Not the ideal time to try to put on a trade. Um, you want to try and catch it on a breakout or a break up or break down and play that trend, whether it's a continuation up or a reversal in a breakdown. So you really just kind of got to wait that out and see which way it's going to go. Chris, thank you so much for being on the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Jim. Always a pleasure. My guest has been Chris Vermeulen from the thetechnicaltraders.com. If you have any questions for Chris or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at Street. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.